My name is Keith Dunlap. I'm 64 years old and I have been writing poetry for over 50 years. I um, made the decision to go to Columbia in New York City when I was 17 to study poetry with uh, David Shapiro, who's a poet and taught there. And uh, never looked back, really. I've had a lot of jobs other than poetry. Uh, haven't been incredibly successful at any of them. Um, I'm a poet. I've, it's the thing I've done all my life. And I think I've done an okay job. Um, I've published in journals and magazines um, around probably 120 poems. Um, all of those, almost all of those in a stretch of about 10 years. Um, I don't know why, but I never tried to really publish until I was about 45. And then um, I just started sending work out and I started getting work accepted. And that led to a small press publishing a book. So I have a book. I actually have two books, two collections and a chat book. I was um, the editor of the Columbia Review when I was at Columbia and I got an MFA in creative writing from the University of Montana and was co-editor of the literary magazine of the graduate school there at Cookbank. I also have an incurable terminal cancer. Um, I'm not going to die very soon, but I'm going to die sooner than expected um, at this point. Uh, the chemotherapy uh, is actually doing a good job, and um, I'm in a standoff with my cancer. It hasn't gone away, but it hasn't gotten worse. And for the type of blood cancer that I have, that's good news. Um, at some point it will get worse, but the shoe hasn't dropped yet. And I was recently going over my body of work, and I realized that even though I've published 120 or so poems and have two books and a chapbook out, I have a lot of, lot of work that I think is, some of it, not all of it, some of it's terrible, but some of it is pretty good that no one is ever going to see. So I had this idea um, to do little readings, to go through my entire corpus uh, around 20 minutes at a time and publish them to YouTube. And that way, preserve what I think of as my legacy. Um, it's not a big deal, but it is, it is my life in a way. It's who I am, it's what I've done. And I'm proud of it and want to preserve it um, and have it available to anyone who's interested. Um, I'm, it's going to be hard not to edit. <laughs> like I said, some of them are terrible, but I'm not going to edit. I'm just going to go ahead and do all of them. Uh, part of the motivation for doing this is because of my cancer, I'm disabled. And so I'm constantly inventing projects for myself to keep myself busy. And this is going to be a project. So, um, I hope you take the time to sample one of the videos.
like I said, I'm going to try and keep them uh, relatively short, but you'll know pretty quickly whether you're, you like it or not. I realize there's a small audience for poetry, but it can be a dedicated audience. And um, I always love giving readings and always got really good feedback from readings. So um, hopefully uh, this will work out. And along those lines, feel free to uh, comment on my work. I'm always interested in what other people think. I think really hard about my work. I work really hard at it and I have for a long time. And um, I have things to say about it myself. And um, I'll say things along the way as, as I read, I think. But um, it just has an introduction. Uh, I come out of the New York school. I was friends with Ashbery and Kenneth Koch and David Shapiro and uh, Ron Padgett and, and others from that time period, the late 70s in New York. Um, and especially my early work is, is very, uh, can be a little difficult and a little too clever. I always had a good ear, but uh, I would let it gallop a little too wildly, I think. Um, but that was the point. And I think some of those poems are very good as a result. Some of them, some of them aren't. But um, I do think the reason I decided to start sending work out when I was 50, 45, 50, was because my work had evolved. It had matured. And I, I really liked where it had arrived. I think my work is um, has a lot to say for itself. Um, I've read, <laughs> I have read a lot of poetry and thought about it um, from uh, ancient Greek and Latin in the original uh, to Spanish and French and Italian poetry, um, as well as English poetry. And so my work is very informed by all that reading, I think. I think if anyone ever asked me, uh, and I, actually I have been asked this question, um, what advice would you give someone who is a young poet? My advice would be learn as many languages as you can and read as much as you can. Um, I don't sit down to write poetry. I'm not someone who thinks I have to treat it like a job where I sit down and try and write a poem every day. That's, I've never done that in my life. <laughs> I've never sat down to try to write a poem. What happens to me is I immerse myself in poetry, music, art, sports, whatever, culture, um, life. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and I don't worry about it. And um, I'll just be, whatever, walking across the street and all of a sudden a snippet, a sound, a piece, almost like a piece of music, but with words will occur to me and I'll feel it and I'll know that, that, that's, that that's the start of a poem. And often if I'm out, I will have written most of it in my head before I get home. Um, the first draft is often very, very fast, but then I'll spend a long time working on it and playing with it and think, letting it rest and coming back to it. And some poems, I have a poem that it took me about 10 years before I, before I felt that it was done. Um, and sometimes it doesn't take that long. Sometimes, you know, right away that that's, that's it. It's done. Um, one of the things I really like about my poetry is that on the, on the surface for sure, I hope that it seems very accessible. I have a narrative tendency in my poetry. There's always kind of a little story in the poem 
that's part of the argument of the poem. And I think that helps. I tr try to keep my imagery vivid without being cliched, um, plain, straightforward, but without being cliched, if possible. And I try to avoid being pedantic, pretentious. I also try to avoid telling the reader what the poem is about. Stepping out of the imagery with a poet's voice to say something deep. I try not to do that. I try to let the, the poem be itself and let the reader figure it out. And often, I, I, because of my composition process, I don't know. Um, it just occurs and, it, and I get it down and then and then as I start to work on it, I start to see that it is about something and that it's interesting or um, or could be interesting to someone and that there is this interplay of imagery and and um, symbol and and um, meaning. Um, my poetry is very musical, but I sometimes sometimes I intentionally beat the drum in um, one of my big influences <laughs> is uh, Dr. Seuss <laughs> uh, but you know <laughs> uh, it's it's but but in you know coming from the New York school in a very self-conscious way um, but most of my music is generally it's very I try to keep it very subtle. The rhymes are not strong in rhymes, generally. Um, the the rhythm is always there, but it but it's loose. I keep it loose uh, so that it's so that it reads modern. It doesn't read old fashioned, but it's. I don't think I don't think poetry can be poetry without music, without sound without a musical ear. Um, so it's there. And it's, I, I think that's part of the reason I like reading out loud is because you can hear it. Um, when I read, I don't try and make it sound important. I just try and read it as naturally as possible and let it either be interesting or not, or sound good or not. I don't try and inflate it with a urgent whisper. <laughs> um, uh, and, um, and yeah, that's, that's it. I do think there's a lot of complexity lurking just below the surface sometimes. My poems end up, because I don't try to make them meaningful, I think sometimes they end up being meaningful. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm surprised often by my by ideas that sort of pop out that weren't um, forced into the poem, but arise from the poem. And that's kind of my whole poetic aesthetic. Like I said, I've thought about it for a long time. And my favorite poems are poems like that. I mean, there's always a little rhetoric in poetry, but um, I try to keep it to a minimum. I try and let, as I said, let the imagery and the symbols and the the meaning coalesce without me hurting it into something that it isn't. And I think because of that, there's often more room for interpretation and more interesting ideas floating around because I'm more of just a channel okay of um, these cultural cues or 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 nature or nature or whatever it is that um, comes together. Obviously there are themes in my poetry. Um, clearly after I got sick with cancer, um, death became a theme. Um, but it was always a theme. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, so I hope you like it. Um, let me know if you do. Uh, just, just drop me a line. Um, I think poetry is important. I don't think you can have life without poetry. So uh, enjoy.